What's going on everybody? This is Tony welcoming you to another video from Comiverse. This is the first episode of a series I'm calling Tony's Comic Spotlight. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the kid who collects Spider-Man. So stick around. What's going on everybody? It's Tony again and welcome you to the first episode of Tony's Comic Spotlight. Uh, we're spotlighting, or I'm spotlighting today, um, Amazing Spider-Man number 248. Um, it was released on October 4th, 1983. It has two stories. The first story in this issue is called And He Strikes Like a Thunderball. And of course the second story is The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man. Um, I'll give you a quick breakdown of the first story um it was a continuation from amazing spider-man 247 where thunderball is um he's trying to find the weapons of his uh crewmates the wet wrecking crew um because he's losing his power so he's trying to find the wrecker's crowbar to get his powers back and um he gets the he gets the uh ball and chain that he uses back and he gets the crowbar and he runs a foul Spider-Man, and uh, but uh, having all the weapons by itself, he becomes a little bit more powerful. And uh, they fight for a little while, and um, the fight ends at a elect electric substation. And Spider-Man somehow, I think he webs the ball to a conduit or something, and electrocutes Thunderbolt and knocks him out. And the police show up and. You know, it's a typical superhero beat him up. Um, I always thought that it was cool that the title was called And He Strikes Like a Thunderball. And that is a dig on the Tom Jones theme song that he did for the James Bond movie Thunderball. And there's a lyric in there that says, And He Strikes Like Thunderball. And I, being a James Bond fan, I always thought that was kind of cool. So, in the second story of Amazing Spider-Man 248, which is entitled The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man. We've got young Tim Harrison, and uh, he's Spider-Man's biggest fan. And he, uh, it's a pretty interesting story. He's always idolized Spider-Man, and he's one of those kids that's went out and, like, he found all of the, I forgot what they call them, I'm going to call them reels of Spider-Man when he was on television when he first started. He has, like, a big old photo album of, uh, newspaper clippings and retractions from the Daily Bugle. Um, and he's just really a diehard Spider-Man fan. And one night, Spider-Man comes and visits him. And they're hanging out for a little while. And Spidey's showing him all the stuff he can do with his powers and whatnot. And gives him a few a little stories about his past. Um, there's an interesting narration through a newspaper article throughout the whole thing I believe the guy's name was jacob conover that works for the daily bugle it's little editorial or little snippets from the newspaper about everything and uh when he met him and um so he uh at, through the course of the events you know tim's having a good time he's meeting his hero and they're you know talking back and forth and He's showing him all of his collection, and um, at the end of the story, he Spider-Man gets ready to leave, and uh, Tim asks him who his, what his secret identity was, and um, first he doesn't want to tell him. You know, he tells him the usual thing. You know, if everybody knew my identity, you know, my family would be in jeopardy. You know, which is always a constant fear of Peter Parker's. And Timmy tells him, he said. Well, I won't, I won't uh, tell anybody as long as I live. So Spider-Man sits there for a second, and just out of blue, he turns around, pulls off his mask, and tells him who he is. And they share a big laugh, realizing that Peter Parker or Spider-Man works for J. Jonah Jameson, the guy that hates him and uh, is always trying to, uh, you know, attack him through the paper and whatnot. And they hug, and you get, and Spider-Man leaves. And the last page will really get you because it shows Spider-Man, one of the last shots, he's standing on a 
brick uh, gate and he has got his head down in his hands and it, well I don't remember exactly what it says but Timmy is at a hospital for terminally ill children and the last newspaper clipping says that he has leukemia and only has two weeks to live and uh, you know I've read a lot of superhero beat-em-ups from X-Men, Spider-Man, Batman, whatever, you know, your traditional good guy versus bad guy. But every once in a while you get this, uh, these stories that just really get you. And when I first started collecting comics, everybody said, well, you collect Spider-Man. You got to read the kid that collects Spider-Man. Okay. Um, and for a long time, I didn't even know what issue it was. And then finally, you know, I found out what it was, what issue it was. I tracked it down. And it just moves you. And I probably would consider it one of my favorite Spider-Man stories of all time. And I'm sure a lot of people will. Some other people would too. Um, I, this is a story I go back and read multiple times throughout the year. And you can't see it. But up here I have a 7.0 copy on CGC. No. Yeah. CGC. That I got for 30 bucks. Um, I have a raw copy as well. Um, but if you ever get a chance, you pick this book up because it's still reasonably cheap. Um, and to be honest, this is one of those books. If I go into a comic book, collect, uh, comic book store, if I see this in the back issue bins, I don't care if I've got a hundred copies. I'm going to buy it every time because I love it. Um, Roger Stern wrote both stories. And now for the Thunderball story, John Romita Jr. did the art. And I believe Ron Friends did the art for the kid that collects Spider-Man. Um, I know a lot of people, if you're watching it, some people watching this video has probably seen it. And But uh, now, like I said, I think it's one of the best stories ever as far as spider-man goes as far as the traditional you know it's not the traditional beat em up stuff but it really gets you and uh, i believe if i'm not mistaken i can't remember the the comic issue i want to say it's like a, a spider-man annual or something but years later timmy's brother tell either tells spider-man that timmy died I believe his brother's name was Joey uh, and uh, tells him that Timmy died and or something. I've never read the story, but I'm going to track that one down. Um, and I know there's a reference to Timmy in Amazing Spider-Man 700 when Peter has this, I don't know if you call it dream or hallucination where he's seeing everybody that died and he, he sees little Timmy. So I guess you were led to believe that you know, he was in heaven, but I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm uh, going to alternate every Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to do a Tony's Topics, and then the next week I'll do a comic book spotlight. So for next week's Tony's Topics, I'm probably going to, uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but uh, join me back in a couple of weeks for episode two of Tony's Comic Spotlight, and I'm going to talk about uh, Batman 408. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you.